Welcome to the first leg of flying to the other side of the world in a Cessna 310 with no radio navigation or GPS. Nor will there be any good pre-flight planning like taking the weather forecast too seriously and most importantly ignoring lots of regulations. Today it's Christmas Eve as we're going to pay homage to the first airport yours truly ever took off from in a flight simulator with Sublogic's Flight Simulator 2. Yes, the airport is in Meg's Airfield, which is no longer in service thanks to Chicago politics. Back then I used a Commodore 64, which ran at about one frame per second, as you can see here. So, why are we departing from Strawberry Ridge? Well, because it's a fun private runway that I also happen to have drone footage for. Along the way, we plan to try finding Noah's Ark. <laughs> That's right. It's rumored that it may be near a freeway and the class Bravo airspace somewhere in Kentucky. This flight will attempt to navigate from here in North Carolina to Chicago without getting too lost in the freezing strong winds of the global warming polar vortex. Move Mixer to the 4000 mark. Anti collision, strobes, magnetos on. Prime left, star left. Prime right, start right. Oil pressure in the green, less than 30 seconds. Boost pumps on low. Turn the avionics on. And close the storm window, it's cold in here. Yeah, let's turn on the heater. It's like 14 degrees Fahrenheit. This also means our density altitude is amazing today. We can actually take off from here with full tanks, with two adult passengers and 200 pounds of baggage. Even just a few days ago, I'd be lucky to take off from here with more than eight gallons of fuel. Give me just enough time to make it to Asheville Regional to refuel. But thanks to the cold weather today, we can skip Asheville. Except we're going to detour there anyway to check out some French Renaissance architecture. A chateau, if you will. Should have put a little bit more air on into the wind. I think I probably took out one of those cones with my left landing gear, maybe even my prop. Well, let's turn on autopilot. Get our RPM and manifold pressure into the green. Let me introduce you to auto, the autopilot. Oh yeah, up there in front of us is Mount Mitchell, the highest peak in the Appalachians. We're just flying east of the ridge and then we'll turn back on course as soon as we clear it. And then uh, duck down under Airspace Charlie. Just south of downtown Asheville, you'll find the Chateau I was referring to earlier. It's known as the Buildmore Estate, built in the late 1800s. It's now considered the largest private residence in the country. Let's drop down for a little closer view. Look at the red wrap, got Papa. Saint One, Asheville Tower, departure coming down, movement area will be at Tower Ridge. Use constant wind is 340-20-28, maintain BFR, on course, red route. Watch my wrist, caution. Of course, Alright, time to get on our way and head north. We'll have to crab to the left quite a bit to fight this very strong northwest wind.
Why is my landing light still extended? Or is it just my right landing light? Let me try cycling the retractor motor here. See if that helps. Uh, looks like we're about to enter some clouds. We're below freezing, so better turn on the pitot heat. motor off just in case that helps nope still tripping hmm I wonder if I got ice in the right landing light or if I just was flying too fast before I tried retracting them and it's jammed guess I'll try to get it fixed when we get to makes was easy, clear to ride up. The propeller is maybe accumulating ice as well, so let's turn on the prop de ice too. <laughs> yep, sure enough, there was ice.
Max, I estimate we should reach the arc around uh, 1621. Since I'm flying at about 3 miles per minute and plan to descend at 1,000 feet per minute down to 2,000 MSL, I'll start descending at 1618. Is that the lake there, or just a field covered in snow? Cincinnati, hello, Frontier 1064, 14.5, descending 11,000 with information. Anyway, at least I see I-75. It's 1620, we should be getting pretty close to the freeway by now. You know what? I'm going to go back up a little to 2,500 feet. 2,000 is just a little bit too low to see much. Wow, I think I see something over there. How lucky I got here. I thought for sure I was probably going to have to fly up and down the freeway a few times. Time to head on for our last leg to Mix Airfield in Chicago. Hold on to Sierra Kilo Yankee Cincinnati approach. Clear through the Bravo airspace.
Fox.com. Contact Chicago Center, 126.47. Right over to Chicago, 2647. We're finally here at Meg's Airfield. Too bad, it's a little on the dark side. Sierra Kilo Yankee, wing 274 at 17. Clear to land, runway 18. Demonstrated crosswind on the Cessna 310 is 20 knots, so we should be good. I uh, probably should have turned my taxi light on. It's kind of hard to land with only one night in light. That was the worst landing ever. Probably need new landing gear after that. Obviously, I need to step up my game on uh, handling crosswinds in this thing. Thank goodness it's dark, so nobody could see. Sierra Kilo Yankee contact ground on one two one decimal eight. I wish these linemen would get out of the way. I kind of feel bad chopping them up, even if they are NPCs. Next leg will be in the daylight, so we should be able to see more of the mechs in the next episode. Looks like my passengers are pretty pissed at me. And apparently I abused both engines. Here's all the places I went way off course. Yeah, Indianapolis was uh, the worst. Well, Logan Sport was pretty bad too, actually. Next flight, we'll be heading out west, where the scenery is more interesting.